What's happening, everybody? Welcome back to Sephora Go. And the patch notes have arrived. So let's jump into it, guys, because there's some good things in these patch notes, but there's also some questionable decisions that Netmarble has made. And, you know, they have gave some of the Center Six some uniforms, right? And they've also gave some of the Center Six some awakened skills, which is pretty unneeded in all honesty, guys. I mean, so they have new uniforms for Green Goblin, Dr. Octopus, and Electro, which is great. That's awesome. And Electro, Mysterio, Vulture, and Sandman have awakening skills. So Vulture and Sandman get awakened skills. Okay. The, you know, and the thing about this, guys, is, you know, they've done this in the past, right? They've done this with, you know, Heimdall. They did it with Elsa. I mean, and, and it just, we all know how this goes. The character gets an awakened skill, and we never level them up. And the only reason we would level them up is for story mode in order to get some more fragments, right? Especially now, considering we can auto-farm. And that's really the purpose of these two. It's just so that we have to farm in the story mode. Uh, to level these characters up. I can tell you guys that there's no way in hell I'm going to awaken them. I'm not going to use resources on them. I'm going to use resources on characters that actually can are playable, can actually be used. Uh, these characters are abysmal, guys. They're terrible right now. They need uniforms. And this is a practice that I thought Netmarble stopped. I was hoping that they wouldn't do this crap anymore, and it looks like they're going to continue it. Now, we could get something later on for Vulture and Sandman. That's altogether possible, especially for Sandman since we just had the movie. Are they going to do it? Who knows? Who knows with Netmarble? Sometimes it's difficult to tell what the hell they're going to do. But there is some other things that really puts a sour taste in your mouth in this update. But I do think we're going to get something to rectify it, right? I do think something's going to be coming. So the first thing we have, guys, is Green Goblin's uniform, which makes him a speed supervillain, which is fine, right? And, you know, he gives him chain hit damage by 15%, which is great. It gives him an all attack to all allies, which is awesome, by 40% ignore target dodge rate by 40%. And, you know, this is an amazing leadership, right? And especially with the ignore target dodge for Null. That's awesome. But there's a problem. He doesn't have a tier three or awakened skill. And this is what I mean by, I think later on they're gonna give us something to rectify this because honestly, Netmarble would be, have to be pretty freaking stupid to give us Green Goblin, a godly requested character, right? That didn't get a tier three. There would be some major ranting guys like, uh, I don't think just for me, I think for everybody. I think it would be huge. There's already people complaining about it. Now, I'm going to be reserved and I'm going to wait because I think maybe in a week or two weeks, we'll probably get a tier three for this character. You know, he didn't get an awakened skill like the others. So I, I pretty much think he's going to get a tier three. They, they need to give him something because if not, then this uniform doesn't mean anything for most players. Nobody's going to buy a uniform to a character that doesn't have a tier three or awakened skill. Unless you're brand new, or unless you love Green Goblin, which a lot of us do. I love Green Goblin. He's freaking awesome. But without an Awakened skill or, or Tier 3, what are you going to do with him? Right? Want to play in Shadowland? Ooh. Right? It's, it's not really all that difficult unless you're a brand new player, right? I mean, he's got some decent things in his kit. 30% increase of energy attack. Uh, they apply to all villain allies. I mean, guys, again, this is amazing, Right? It's amazing, right? So his leadership, like, a, like, I mean, it goes to all allies, but with that leadership to villains, this is a nutty, nutty freaking support character. And that's, unfortunately, another worry I have about Green Golem is that when I see these kinds of things, right, this kind of leadership and this kind of uh, tier two passive, I tend to think, oh man, he's going to be a freaking support, right? I mean, I'm pretty sure he's going to get tier three, right? But I really wanted more for Green Goblin. I mean, seriously. But I mean, even but if he is, he'll always be relevant, right? Like all the other support characters. So there is that, right? But he still might be strong. We just don't know. He's got a shield that gives him 30% of HP, which is okay, fine, whatever. Uh, he gets a little extra dodge increase. He gets a nice huge heal. Uh, four seconds of invincibility. That's really good. He's got five seconds of immunity here. His cooldowns are fairly low, so hopefully he can play with a proc. He's got paralysis. He's got uh, a damage proc built in his kit, so hopefully that can transfer over. But again, guys, without a tier three or without an awakened skill, all this really doesn't mean anything, right? Uh, the increase all attack by 100% is bonkers. Like, that's bonkers. 
along with the damage proc. I mean, he's got a pretty amazing looking kit, other than the fact he doesn't have damage accumulation, which is probably what they're going to give him whenever he gets a tier three, right? They'd probably slap the accumulation on him if they do give him a tier three. But just not having it right now, it just, it really just brings you down. And honestly, I don't like it when Net Marvel does this kind of crap, right? They give us a character and they don't give him a tier three. They give an awakened skill to characters. They don't give, or they give awakened skills to characters, but they don't give them a uniform, right? Either way you go, it just sucks. Because if an awakening, if a character's getting an awakening, but they're not getting an up-to-date uniform, then you're not going to use them at all, except for a requirement for story mode. And nobody wants to level up a character for that reason. And whenever they do things like this with Green Goblin, where they give us a good-looking kid, a great-looking uniform, looks awesome, but they don't give us a tier three. They're not finalizing it for us, right? And I know maybe they're trying to build the anticipation, but I honestly think they should really get out of the habit of doing this kind of stuff. This is just my personal opinion. And say, hey, he's getting a tier three. Just be more transparent about it, right? I mean, I'm pretty sure he's going to get one, but it would have been better if they would have. Then we get to Dr. Octopus, who is a combat supervillain, which I'm definitely looking forward to. They did keep him as a supervillain, so... He might be a, you know, a really great character for ABX because of this. I mean, I know that isn't what everybody wants to hear. Hopefully he's really great. Like, like you guys know from the previous video I just made that I'm hoping he's going to be godly. Like he can push stage 60 against Null, but what are the chances of that? I mean, I don't know. Nemo really milks out this stuff, but look at this guy's kit. I mean, he's got a heal, right? Whenever he does tentacle shockwave, he's got a heal and he's got an insane... 200% damage proc. That's a big ass proc, guys. And that's on a 10 second cooldown. That's that's pretty damn nice. He has a nice 40% increase of physical attack and decreased damage received. Awesome. He gets chain in damage by 20%. He gets critical rate, which does kind of signify maybe ABX, right? And then, you know, his one is it's on a little cooldown, whatever, you know, cap station and, you know, he's got five, six immunity on the third skill. He has invincibility on the fourth skill, which is nice, guys. And he also has an all attack by 40%, but he has no damage accumulation. And then that makes me worry. It's like, oh, man, you know, he might hit hard and he might do amazing in ABX, but I just wonder, and man, with that damage product, I mean, I don't know. He might be, he might be really awesome. He looked awesome. Looked like he'd done an insane amount of hits. And with that uh, chain hit damage that he's got, I mean, he might be really strong. We'll see. And then we get into Electro, who is a speed supervillain. Also, he gets a decreased damage received. Increased damage dealt to targets with shock effect by 90%. Whew. Excluding bosses, ignore enemies' damage decrease by 30%, which is more of a PvP thing. And then he has uh, increased all attack just by 60% to Sinister Six allies. I mean, you know, there, there's there's not so many of Sinister Six allies, so it's kind of a niche leadership, but it's still a good leadership for himself and a couple, few other characters. Increase all, uh, applies all allies, uh, increase lightning damage, so he could be a support as well. And none of the other Sinister Six has lightning damage, so yeah, you can't double up with his leadership and that. And then applies to self, increase basic damage to superheroes by 30% and decrease damage received by 30%. Okay, okay, okay. So that's really only useful maybe for a PvP. And then he has a huge heal on his third skill by 35%. And then he's got this wacky new thing that Nat Mole was trying to implement here where we have accumulation, movement, distance upon moving for eight seconds. Increase all basic attack by 1.2% for every 1% accumulated movement distance proportional to max accumulated movement distance. So the more distance he moves, the more accumulation he's going to acquire. So what this signifies to me is that whenever you're playing with this character, say you're playing with like a mighty or whatever or brilliant and you got that little bar that actually increases whenever you're moving around, this might have some amazing synergy with something like that. Maybe it'll amount to nothing, right? Or maybe it could be something really, really cool. And, you know, if Electro's moving around all, of, all over the place, he's going to get this form of accumulation. I do like that Netmarble is trying to do something different and something that makes him different from other characters. We'll see how it plays out, guys. And then the fourth skill gives him penetration. I mean, he's kind of looking like a PvP character because of the decreased damage received from superheroes, uh, the increased damage of superheroes uh, among the increase of the uh, penetration. And also, his fifth skill gives him ignore iframe. 
So Electro is looking like a pretty amazing PvP character. Unfortunately, he is a paywall. So if you're free to play, that's probably not going to be to your liking. And then applies to enemies. He's got, you know, shock resistance down or lightning resistance down. I mean, this goes up to 75%. That's pretty high. So against regular world boss, it's going to be pretty nutty, guys. Uh, decrease all basic uh, all ADD, more or less, all defense down. It starts up at 20%, goes up to 75%. So he might be really good for some one shots uh, for the regular world bosses. But if you have any amount of pierce on your account, that's not going to matter either. I mean, now when I look at all defense down, there, don't get me wrong. There's good things about it. He might be good in Dispatch Mission. I mean, we'll see. We'll see. And then he has Invincibility. He has Super Armor. He's got 30% all attack. Okay. But he, but he does have Accumulation, which is nice. Okay. The Uniform is going to have a 40% discount. And then we get into Awakened Skills. Okay. Okay. So, I mean, okay, fine. Electro gets an Awakened Skill. Nothing really special, guys. It's a good looking Awakened Skill, but it's just the same old run of the mill stuff that we've come to expect, except for the Lightning Resistance down. But then Mysterio and Vulture and Sandman. I'm not even going to talk about this. There's no point, really. Uh, unfortunately, there's just nothing to say about it because. None of these characters are that good. Mysterio isn't a bad character, but getting an Awakened skill, I mean, we'll see, guys, but nah, no, no. And then they show the Awakened skills, okay, whatever. And then we get into some artifacts. And we have Dr. Octopus's artifact, which increases base damage of aliens by 25%. I don't, look, so here's the thing about artifacts. I personally don't get excited at all when I see artifacts. I don't. Because I know what are the chances of getting a six star artifact or even a four star artifact or even a, or even a, I'm sorry, even a five star artifact, right? What are the chances? Unless they do some kind of event where we can actually get an artifact guaranteed, like they, what they've done in the past, right? I don't get too excited about this, even if it has a good skill, even if it has a good effect, I just don't care, right? I mean, let me know in the comments how you guys feel whenever you see these artifacts, but I mean, it's a decent artifact. I mean, you know, increased alien damage for 25% is good for certain world bosses. That's actually really good. The creature thing is kind of whatever. There's only a couple characters with creature. Uh, Green Goblin, you know, getting the extra uh, all attack is nice. There's no cooldown on it. Uh, you know, Sandman, I mean, Sandman Mysterio and Vulture, I mean, I'm just kind of like, I mean, is it really going to matter? No. Uh, Electro... I mean, it could be good. I mean, this all attack can go up to 60%. So, I mean, it, it could be really, really strong for him. But, I mean, I mean, guys, you know, you can see the dislikes, although, you know, this really isn't a good gauge to go by. There's usually a lot of dislikes in the forum, even when we have a good, awesome update. But this update, to me, just looks like... I don't know, man. I really wish they would have just clarified whether or not they were going to give Tier 3 to Green Goblin. I'm pretty sure they will. And I really wish they would have gave uniforms to Sandman and Mysterio, right? To the and Vulture, right? Like, and they might still do that. I mean, they might still give them uniforms, although I wouldn't hold my breath for that. And I'm pretty sure they're going to give a tier three for Green Goblin. And I, I, you can pretty much count on it that they're going to do that. But I really wish they'd just be more transparent whenever they do these updates and do these patch notes to let us know, hey man, don't worry. You know, tier three, tier three, you know, uh, maybe we got an upcoming tier three in a week or so, because maybe in their minds they're thinking, well, we can build up the anticipation, but really all it does is just upset players. Players just don't like it, right? They just want to know beforehand what's actually going on. So that's something that I really don't care for, but I mean, it's going to be arriving in patch guys. We're going to have this update very, very soon. So let me know how you're all feeling about the patch notes. And I do stream on Twitch at 9 PM, GND plus seven time. The link is in the description below. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching y'all. Take care and have a good one. See everybody.